Hello everyone, in this video I'm gonna do something that I don't often do and I'll give you a trick. So normally uh, I get the question that how do we remember all the truth tables regarding flip-flops because there are so many flip-flops and so many truth tables and not only truth tables but we also have excitation tables and characteristic tables. So how do we remember them all? So the simple answer is we do not, we do not remember them. So the next question is how do we accomplish then? So the answer is quite easy. You are only having responsibility of knowing the path to follow that leads you to the truth table of any flip-flop you want. Basically, the idea arises from a SR ledge, right? So you gotta know the structure of an SR ledge. So in an SR ledge, you would have two NAND gates, just like this one, right? And those are gonna have an output of Q and Q naught. These are the outputs and the inputs. One of uh, the NAND gates are having an input of S and the other input of the NAND gate will be the connection of the output to the second NAND gate. And then actually for the second NAND gate, one of the inputs is gonna be R and the other one is gonna be the output of the first NAND gate, NAND gate, sorry, not AND, all right. So this is what we are having, this is on a SAR ledge. And in an SAR ledge, since we are talking about NAND gates, it is important to obtain the truth table of a NAND gate. So let's say we have S and R and we put them in an NAND gate, this is what we're gonna get, 00110101. Logically, this is gonna be the opposite of an end gate. And we know for a fact, whenever one of the inputs of an end gate is zero, then you're gonna have the answer exactly as zero. So the opposite case would be that whenever you have a zero in the input part, you're gonna have the output as one. So one, 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 zero, that's it. So with that simple logic, actually, we come to think about it. Whenever I have S is equal to zero and R is equal to one, I could easily see that the output of the first NAND gate is gonna be one and the second one is gonna be zero. So that means Q is equal to one and Q prime is equal to zero. So whenever S is equal to one and R is equal to zero, in that case, the situation will just reverse. Here we're gonna have zero and here we're gonna have one. So Q is gonna be equal to zero, Q prime is gonna be equal to one, guys. So what about when S is equal to zero and R is equal to zero? In that case, both of the outputs would be one, which is a problematic case because the complement of something cannot be equal to itself. I mean, Q cannot be equal to complement of Q. That's why we're gonna say not used. And whenever both S and R are equal to one, in that case, we're gonna have the memory. And as you can see, this is as easy as it gets. This is the truth table of an SR ledge. Let us put it in a table, S and R. We're gonna have zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, and the output, which is Q and plus one, is gonna be, whenever it is zero, zero, we're gonna have not used, so I'll just have a stick in here. Zero, one, we're gonna have one, one, zero, we're gonna have zero, one, one, we're gonna have memory, so I'll just put QN. This is the truth table of an SR ledge. But wait a minute, this is not enough because I also need to obtain SR flip-flop. How do I do that? So logically, I come to think about it again, as I said, just imagine, just think about the way, think about the path that we obtain the truth tables. So. A SAR ledge is not enough because we come to think about it and we say these inputs must be conserved, must be protected because these inputs can change randomly and this is not something we would like. That's why we need to somehow provide that protection by using another logical gate, which is another NAND gate, right? For both of the inputs. That's why actually we are gonna add two more NAND gates, once for the S input, the other one is for the R input. And again, we're gonna give these gates inputs as S and R, and then they're gonna have a common input, which is to be called a clock. Here we're gonna have a clock. And the idea behind the clock is the fact that we would like to control when this particular circuitry works and not. So we are basically controlling the circuitry by using a clock and clock tells circuitry when to work and when not to work. This is the idea of a clock. And also naturally we would now change here to S prime and in here to R prime because we are also having S and R inputs. So this is the idea of an SR flip-flop. 
So when we come to think about it, now we have three inputs, which are S, clock, and R. So by considering these inputs, we are also able to find out the expression for S prime and also R prime. Let us check that S prime is actually going to be equal to the output of the NAND gate in here. The whole idea is to obtain the complement of an AND gate. And whenever we use de Morgan's law in here, we're going to have S naught or clock naught. This is the result of S prime. And let us also check out the result of R prime. The result of R prime is in a similar way going to be R naught or clock naught. Now, let us construct the truth table. We're going to have clock, that's the first element, then we're going to have S, then we're going to have R, and then we're going to have QM plus 1. That's it. It is easy as that. So whenever clock is 1, notice that since both of the, uh, e uh, you know, both of the inputs to RSR ledge, which are S prime and R prime, they're both having clock naught. So if clock is 0, clock naught is going to be 1, and S naught or clock naught definitely going to be 1, that's an R gate. So in general, that's going to be 1. So check out whenever S is 1 and R is 1 in an SR ledge that's going to yield QN. So logically, we don't care what the values of S and R are, we're directly going to give QN, which is the memory. But what about when clock is 1, S is 0, and R is 0? In that case, S prime is going to be 1, or clock not, which is going to be 0, so in the end, it's going to be 1. And for R prime, we're going to have 1 or 0, and that's again going to be 1. So 1, 1, again... We that's leading us to QN, so another memory. But what about 1, 0, and 1? In that case, as you can see, S prime again becomes 1. However, this time, R prime becomes 0 or 0. That's going to be 0. So in that case, notice that S is 1 and R is 0. That's going to be a 0. Let us scroll down the page a little. What about 1, 1, 0? In that case, this time, S prime is going to be zero, clock not. I mean, this is not S prime, this is S complement, sorry. S complement or clock complement, that's going to be zero or zero, that's going to be zero, right? So, what about R prime? In that one, actually, we are having R not or clock not, that's going to yield a one. So, zero one is going to give us the answer as one. What about one, zero, and zero? What about one, one, and one? So, in this case, as you can see, both of the uh, inputs to the SR ledge, which are S prime and R prime, those yield zero. So zero, zero is not used case, so we are not using that. So I know for a fact this video has taken so long time, but you should also be aware of the fact that since I'm trying to explain everything in detail to you, it takes a lot of time. But whenever you are alone in an exam and whenever you know the topic really solid, it is only going to take one or two minutes. I could even actually prepare a video just to prove that, uh, just to prove how long does it take for me to, you know, prove all the truth tables regarding a SAR flip-flop. We could also make a video like that. But what I'm trying to show you in this lecture is that you do not have to memorize any of the truth tables regarding flip-flops or latches. You only need to know the path to follow so that you can easily get any of the table you want, all right? This is the idea. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.